Welcome back everyone to part two of our lecture series on missing data. We're going to head straight to the Jupyter Notebook and show you how to either keep missing data, replace missing data, or drop missing data all with pandas. Let's head to that Jupyter Notebook. Okay, here we are in the Jupyter Notebook. I've already imported NumPy as NP and pandas as PD. As a quick note, with the version of pandas that we're using for this course environment, we're going to use np.nan to display a null value, essentially saying, this is not a number, It's we don't know what it is, it's missing. But newer versions of pandas will have pd.na, which is a new pandas value, and there's a little bit of description inside the lecture notebook with a link to the GitHub issue. This is probably going to be in the future the way they indicate missing data, and there's also specialized versions like nat to symbolize that the value that is missing should be a timestamp of some sort. But for right now, we're really just gonna focus on np.nan, since when we read in data, that's the way it's gonna be displayed. So the second thing I want to focus on is that typical comparisons should be avoided with missing values. And there's two great links inside your lecture notebook, which give a little more explanation than what we're gonna show here. But essentially, when I mean that typical comparisons should be avoided, if you say np.nan and check for equality with np.nan, Often, beginners will think that this should be true. But in reality, it's actually false. And the general logic here is that since you don't know truly what this value is, it should be missing, and you also don't know what this value is, it's missing, there's no way you can actually tell if these two missing values are gonna be equal to each other. So it says they are false. However, if you are checking for some value to be nan or not, you have to say np.nan is np.nan and then that will return true. So if you have some variable that for some reason is missing, you should be using my variable is np.nan to check whether or not it's actually a missing value. Don't actually use equality here for the reasons stated earlier. Okay, so next let's go ahead and read in a data set that has some missing values. I'll say df is equal to pd dot read csv and this data set it's in the pandas folder it's simply called movie scores dot csv and if we check out this data frame notice we have some information we have actors here first name last name so first name of the actor tom hanks the age of that actor the sex of that actor and then we went ahead and did a survey here so essentially people were asked to score their opinions of actors from a one to ten scale before and after watching one of their movies. However, some data is missing. So here we have Tom Hanks, 63, male, and the pre-movie score for this survey was eight. And then after watching a Tom Hanks movie, they decided to score him 10. You'll notice this second row at index one is missing all the values. And then you'll notice Hugh Jackman, it looks like for this particular survey, we uh, didn't actually have a pre-movie score or post-movie score. So we didn't actually show any movies here. And then Oprah Winfrey and Emma Stone, you'll see that those are fully informed. Okay, so let's go ahead and show you how to check and select for null values. One way to do this is by saying df is null. And what this method does is it simply returns a Boolean, true or false, if you have a null value. So notice true for every item in row one where they were all null values. And then Hugh Jackman, row two, we have true because he didn't have a pre-movie score or post-movie score. If you want to check for the opposite, you can say df not null. Run that, and then you'll get essentially the opposite of that. It's going to give you false if it is a null value, and true if it's not a null value. Okay, so as you can imagine, we can start using actual columns and this not null or is null method calls to select rows based off whether or not it's missing that value. So for example, let's go ahead and check out all the actors where we're not missing their pre-movie score. So that's gonna be Tom Hanks, Oprah Winfrey, and Emma Stone. What we can do here is say DF, and then select that column, the pre-movie score, and then say not null, and now we have Booleans associated with each row. So I know that I have a pre-movie score for row zero, three, and four. 
which then I simply pass this in, just as we've done before with conditional filtering. And then I only get back the rows where I have a pre-movie score. So you can use these not null and is null conditional filtering to only select columns where certain features are present. Okay, so another example is, let's say I was only looking for an actor where the pre-movie score was missing and then their sex was also not null. What I could do here is just combine these. So say pre-movie score is null, Recall that's Hugh Jackman. So if I just pass this in, I say pre-movie score is null, that's Hugh Jackman, and it's also the row that's missing everything. So there's two here that are returned. So this row that's missing everything, and then Hugh Jackman. And let's say I wanna add in another condition, maybe where we actually know the first name. So I don't have to worry about these rows where I don't even know the actor's name. I can combine conditions just as before. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit so we can see this. We just wrap this condition in parentheses and then say and, and then parentheses here I'll say where first name is not null. So just as before, this is conditional filtering except now we're using method calls on these columns and this is essentially asking me or asking pandas to return where's the pre-movie score null and where I also know the first name. So the first name is not null. And so when you run that, you only get back Hugh Jackman, which makes sense. Okay, so now that we're familiar with the is null and not null methods, as well as how to do conditional filtering based off if something is null or not null, let's talk about the three options we had, which were to keep the data, drop the data, or fill the data. So keep the data, that one's really easy. You just say DF, read in the data, and then if it's missing, you just go ahead and keep it in. Okay, so keep the data pretty much done with that one. You just read in the data set, keep any missing values, and then you're done. So let's move on to dropping the data. And there is a drop NA call, and I would highly recommend that you call help on DF drop NA. And then it's actually gonna show you some really nice examples here of how it works, as well as the important parameters. And the important parameters are really axes, essentially saying, are you gonna drop based off rows or based off columns? How you're gonna drop it, if you have any myth, any uh, cells missing or any values missing or all those values missing. And then also the threshold, which is going to require that many non-null values. And then you also have the subset argument, which is going to allow you to only consider certain columns. So let's kind of build up on these different parameters. And what's nice here is they're actually showing you an example here of this data frame as well as how to quickly build in that data frame. And what we're gonna do here is say, take my data frame, and then I'm just gonna say drop NA. And if you just say drop NA, essentially what it's gonna do is it's gonna drop any rows that have any missing values. So you run that and you get rid of that row that had all those missing values, as well as Hugh Jackman, where he didn't have those movie scores. But let's imagine we only wanted to drop that row that was missing all those values. What I can then do is use this threshold argument. And again, the threshold, sometimes it's a little tricky to understand, but all it's saying is I require that many non-null or non-NA values. So if I come back here and say threshold is one, that basically says, go ahead and drop any rows that contain null values unless they have at least one non-null value, which that means when I run this, I see Hugh Jackman, again, even though he's missing his pre-movie score and post-movie score, he has at least one non-null value, such as his name. And I can keep raising this. I can say four here. And you notice Hugh Jackman still shows up because we have his first name, last name, age, and sex. But if I raise this to five, he gets dropped because he doesn't have at least five non-null values. Okay. So that's a way to kind of distinguish dropping something that's missing all the values versus we have at least some information on them. Nice way to essentially remove rows that are just missing everything. Now let's also talk about the axes argument. If I say df drop na and I say axis is equal to one, you'll notice by default, if I do shift tab here, axis is equal to zero, meaning it's focused on the rows. If I say axis is equal to one, it drops everything. So why is that? 
Well, now it's considering based off columns. So it's essentially saying in our original data frame, here we have basically values where we have columns that are missing values. And you'll notice that every single column has at least one instance of a missing value. First name has a missing value in the column, last name, etc. And it's really because of this row one. So if I say axe equal to one, instead of dropping rows, it's gonna say, okay, drop columns that are missing any values. So that's all the columns. All the columns have missing values here. So typically when we're dropping things based off null values, especially if the way we organize our data where rows are data points and columns are feature, we're just gonna leave default axis is equal to zero because that's really typically the way we're thinking about this. Okay, so as you can imagine, you can use the threshold argument to essentially filter out based off any conditions you want. And the last important argument to show you is the subset argument, which is basically only going to consider certain columns. So define in which columns to look for missing values. Here they're using subset, so let's go ahead and do that. We see df here, and then what we can say is df drop na, that removes everything that's missing any values based off the rows. But if I say subset, and we pass in a list of columns to consider, such as last name, and we run that, you'll notice Hugh Jackman now shows up instead of being dropped as before. So if I say df, just drop na, it drops Hugh Jackman. But if I say subset, it's basically only gonna consider the last name column. And there was only one row that was missing the last name, that was this number one row. So you can use combinations of subset and threshold to filter out based off whatever columns you're concerned with that are missing values. Okay, so we now know how to drop values as well as how to set conditions for what values should be dropped. But now let's move on to actually filling in the data. And this is kind of the hardest one to really consider because you have to have a reasonable choice here. So if I say DF, I can call fill NA. And again, I would encourage you to call help.fillNA and check out the documentation here where it's showing you examples of how to fill NA. But something to note here is that right off the bat, you could just say df fill NA and then just provide a single value that would fill in every single missing point. So I'm just gonna provide a string here saying new value exclamation mark. So note we have first name, age and so on, pre-movie score, and if I just say fill NA to a new value, it automatically fills in this string to wherever we had stuff that was missing. Now, typically this is not what you're going to do because now I'm replacing strings where something should have been probably a numeric like 63 or 51. And so what pandas ends up doing is if you start filling in strings for columns that should have been numeric, it's gonna start making this 63 into a string instead of a floating point value or integer value. So while this is possible of saying fill NA, typically we don't just say one value. Instead, we grab the column we're interested in filling. So for example, if I wanted to select pre-movie score and wherever that's missing a value, go ahead and fill it in with zeros. I would say DF pre-movie score and then call fill NA here with zero. And so now you'll notice that there's zeros here instead. And if I wanted to make this change permanent, all I would need to do is assign this change. Take in the current pre-movie score. If there's a missing value, fill it with zero. And then that's my new column. Now I'm not gonna run this to show you a couple more examples, but hopefully you get the idea that you can do this typically at a level. So for example, if I didn't know the sex, but maybe I assumed anyone with missing sex was male, I could say fill in A with the string M. And one of the most common questions I get then from students is, I don't wanna fill in by just some arbitrary value like zero. I actually want to fill in based off a function like the mean. Well, that's actually quite easy to do. So if we take a look at pre-movie score again, notice I didn't run that cell. So I still have the null values. You can simply read in the data frame CSV file again if you accidentally ran that. But let's say I want to fill in these null values with the average pre-movie score. Well, what do we do here? We can simply say df pre movie score dot mean. And what's nice about dot mean is it's going to give you the average based off the existing values. So it's only looking at six, seven, and eight. And the average of these three should kind of obviously be the center value, seven. So 
That's the mean value. And so what we can do is say df pre movie score dot mean and then say dot fill na with the mean value. And when you run that, you'll notice that these two points that were missing are now filled with the average value. And sometimes if you have a pure numeric column, what you can do is say df fill na with df mean, open close parentheses, and that will attempt to automatically fill everything with the averages. Now, does this make sense sometimes? Maybe. It probably makes sense for something like pre-movie score, where you just assume that people have some sort of average feeling towards an actor, but it probably doesn't make sense to start doing things like fill in with the average age. What is nice about this method of just calling it on the entire data frame is for things that don't have an average value, there's no average value for the first name, it just went ahead and kept it as null values. So it's kind of like a quick and dirty way to fill in things. And finally, the last thing we'll show you for filling in missing values is with the interpolate method for interpolation. Now we're typically not gonna actually use something as direct as this, but I do wanna show you that this method exists. We'll show you kind of some more sophisticated ways of doing this within the feature engineering section. But I'm just gonna copy and paste this dictionary from the lecture notebook and then turn this into a series by saying series is equal to pd.series airline ticks. I run that and I get my series. So as I mentioned before, sometimes you want to interpolate. Is this a good situation for interpolation? Uh, probably because I can see these are airline ticket prices where economy is $30, economy plus is then $50. I'm missing the business value price class. And then there's first class at $100. So it might make sense to try to interpolate this, assuming it's already in the correct order. Again, that's kind of a big assumption here but I could interpolate missing values. And what it does is it just does a linear interpolation from the point above and the point below. So it's gonna fill this in with a linear interpolation between 50 and 100, which is essentially the average between 150, or excuse me, 100 and 50, which is gonna be 75. And for that, you simply say interpolate. And then it fills it in with the interpolation. Again, we're really not gonna do this too often because you have to do a lot of assumptions here as far as the ordering of your data, but technically you could sort by maybe another column and then start the interpolation process that way. There's a link to the full docs on the method. You can also just kind of do shift tab here to explore the documentation inside your Jupyter Notebook. But as I mentioned, we're gonna show you some more sophisticated ways of filling in missing data when we talk about feature engineering, essentially using values from other feature columns to fill in the data. All you need to understand from this lecture is that you have a couple of method calls that you should know. So after this lecture, the main things to take away is the fact that you shouldn't be doing comparisons on null values with equality, instead use is. And then there is the is null method, as well as the not null method available to you. And then finally, there is drop na available to you, as well as if we scroll down here, the fill na method. So just remember those method calls and we'll be using them throughout the machine learning and data science portions of this course. Thanks, and I'll see you at the next lecture.